Thanks, Mark, for uh, giving me five minutes of your time. The first question I wanted you to ask ahead of this big rugby weekend for Fylde concerns the recent improvement in form and results of the first team. What can you attribute that to? Uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of uh, belief. Um, I mean, since Christmas, uh, we've had a couple of results that you would say have gone awry for us, particularly Albanians uh, and Sindiford away. But in all the other games, we're picking up points here. Even against Cambridge, we've got two points and we've got to score four tries in that game. So I think we've always had the potential, but I just think when we played Sedgley Park, we really were focused. It was a local derby and things went well for us, it has to be said. But we got confidence with that and the team grew throughout that mm -hmm. game and then we went to Coventry and whilst we didn't play particularly well we hung on and really contained them when they were in there they had a purple patch and our defence was absolutely outstanding and then as they tired we put pressure on them and you know Chris Johnson managed to get into a field position where we could slot over a a winning yep. drop goal, so we've got two away games, and then preparation for Saturday against Rossing Park was that, you know, we've earned the right to play well at home, um, we trained very well in the, in the week prior to that, and there was a lot of belief, I changed one or two positions around, um, and the players that came in, uh, in different positions, you know, reacted very well, and in the second half, we showed what we're capable of doing. Uh, so, a combination of hard work, belief, and most importantly, we've got some very good players. This visit this weekend of Ealing, uh, who are leaders and look like they're going to be the champions of the division, uh, then uh, 13 points clear of the second team, Bladen. Um, obviously, it's a big occasion for, for Fylde and indeed for Ealing. Um, uh, we will have beaten the top, the second, third and fourth teams here at the Woodlands. Bladen, Isha uh, and Rosslyn Park have all been beaten here. So there's something about delivering to these top teams, playing well against these top teams here, which is clearly notable. Now, Ealing will pose different problems. And I'm interested in how you prepare for a match like that, given that you know the style of Ealing, for instance, will be quite different to Bladen. Well, you look, the players are smart as well as, you know, coaches. I mean, they know their opposition. You've got Stat Bunker, you've got the internet, and there's, as we do at Fylde, you can look at opposition. I rather personally, as a coach, we focus on ourselves. Um, but you've got to take your hats off to Ealing. They had five points deducted last year. I think they would have put more pressure on Jersey had that not been the case. Um, they set the stall out this year, and they've been in some pretty good company at the top end with Isha. Obviously, Rosslyn Park, Bladen have had a very good season, so they've had to really work, and they've won a lot of their games by the smallest of margins. Um, so well, that tells me that they're very committed side to the cause. I think they've been lucky with injuries. Uh, I think they've pretty much had a consistent team throughout. Um, they come from Planet London, that you know, and all. If you read my program notes on Saturday. Uh, I talk about that. Um, now, in order to prepare against a side like that, we, we just back ourselves and you know, the team talk will be pretty simple. We just go for it, we play our game uh, and we try to perform. With performance, the results come. Um, I'm very much, you talk chicken and egg, heart and uh, horse and cart, I believe that performance comes first rather than results. A lot of coaches say this is a must win game. That is a pretty trite statement because in order for it to be a must-win game, you've got to have a process by which you must win it. We focus on performance and sort of backing ourselves and hope that that produces the results. Elin and Bladen, for instance, first and second in the division, have very different scoring records. Elin use their they use a much wider game. They've scored, I think, 74 tries through their backs and 24 or something like that through their forwards. Bladen have scored 43 tries with their backs and 43 tries through their forwards. So they, obviously those two teams play, one assumes, in a rather different fashion. 
Uh, do, you, do you adapt your game plan to a side like Ealing, which has obviously dangerous wingers, they play it much wider, more open attacking game? Do you change? Well, no, you see, what that does, that presupposes that you're constantly worrying about the opposition. Yeah. My philosophy would be that you take care of yourself. If by taking care of yourself, then you can put pressure on the opposition. It, it, it's a juxtaposition. Yeah. I like the phrase, it's an off-use phrase, attack is the best form of defence. We never prepare to defend specifically against an opposition, unless it's an obvious thing like on Saturday, um, Hugo Ellis picks up from yep. the base, goes blind, we make players aware of that. We are, know that Ealing will spray it wide, so you make the the drift defence works like so there's a slight adaptability yeah. but it's not the primary focus the primary focus i think in winning the game is to look at your game how you can pressurize the opposition and force them onto the back foot rather than trying to work out ways of stopping them play it's better to work out ways of them stopping you play in attack and defense or with or without the ball We've got some young players here coming through well into the first team squad and obviously the art of maintaining a, co a competitive community club like this is to keep a balance of experience and youth. Uh, th three or four young players have come through this season, most notably uh, Ben Rath recently, uh, Tom Burtonwood, uh, Ben Vernon who's had a pretty much a full season and slightly early in the season Danny Mayer. What are the attributes that you look for in these kinds of players so that they can make the progress from what is often maybe county under 20s up to senior rugby of the standard? Could I answer that in a moment, just park that there yeah. and just pick up on something you said when you were introducing the question at Falbin, a community club. Which community do we service? Do we service the Lytham and St Anne's an Ansel and Fairhaven community? Do we service the Fowl Coast community? Do we service the Wire and Fowl Coast community? Do we service the Lancashire rugby community? Or do we service the North West rugby community? I would look at, if you talk about the way the game is broken down, if you say the top two leagues are the elite area of the game, and then you've got the NCA being 